Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Corner Talks podcast. Today, I have a friend, talented actor, and host of the Up and Adam show, the podcast show. What's going on? How are you, man? I'm doing good, Daniel. How's it going, man? Thanks for having me on. I'm so excited. Of course, yeah. You uh, are quite a remarkable fellow, man. Like I've been following your work um, over the past year. You've uh, created a podcast show along with other people we know, but yours sticks out to me the most, and I'll get into it. Uh, just the sheer commitment, um, you know, the the high creativity you implement, but also the quality of guests. <laughs> it's amazing yeah, the thanks, the amount man. of guests that you pull. Um, you know, for myself, you know, I include like people that are creatives, my friends, colleagues, people like yourself, but you have like quite uh which i'll discuss more like notable people that i can actually say wow i actually know that guest or i'm interested in like what they have to say because i've been following their career um or they're associated with something that uh i've been a fan of since i was a child so just highly commendable uh amazing work and uh looking forward to what you're going to achieve with this podcast um really yeah it. not a problem and, and, and you know what it's, it's funny because I, I don't really go on podcasts often because i don't get invited to them often right but um I, I've been listening to yours for quite a bit and, uh, and you're great at what you do, man. And like, it's, it's nice to get inspired by other people. Like I, I, in no way, just cause of some of the guests I've got on, I, I no way, no way, shape or form think I'm better than anybody else doing it. I learn off everybody else, just like how we should be right. Everyone should learn off everybody else. And that's how everyone grows as a, a as a community in this industry. Right. So. Yeah, for sure. And that's, and you just said it right there, right. It's like uh, when you have, people around you that are in the same field or people that you're inspired by, instead of looking at, at them as competition, uh, you look at them as collaborators. Right. Yeah. Um, and that's exactly how I see us is, you know, we, we've connected, uh, in the past, uh, earlier this year and, you know, I have no idea who you, who you were beforehand. <laughs> right. Uh, but you had this interesting show up and Adam show and some mutual followers. I follow you and, um, yeah, you, you just kind of said like, you know, I, I love your work. I love what you're doing. And then I started following your work and I said, wow, like this, this is the effort shows, you know, like what you're, what you're uh, implementing in the podcast, but nevertheless, because we're on that subject of the up and Adam show, this is your podcast, uh, this uh, great project you've conceived um, over the course of the pandemic. I want to know what was the reason for creating this podcast and committing to it for so long? Well, be before this, I was actually a barber for like four years. So oh, okay. I would, yeah. So I, I started in high school and I was never, I never one to like, like to work for somebody. I always really, I've always wanted to be my own person, have mm -hmm. my own thing. And, uh, you know, I, I'm always a firm believer that you using your own talents to the best of your ability. Yeah. There's a famous yeah. quote from one of my favorite movies, the Bronx tale, you know, the, the saddest thing in life is a waste of talent. Right. Yeah. So, um, so I, I just, in high school, I was like, you know, how can I make some money? I, I wasn't even, I wasn't even getting hired at Fortinos or Longos or anywhere. Right. Yeah. So I yeah. just, I just saw, you know what? I was, um, I had a, uh, a, a barber that I was going to for a while and he was a good friend of mine. And then he was like, I'm like, have you ever thought about cutting hair? I said, no, I never thought about it, but I give it a shot. Why not? Right. Yeah. Pretty good hands on. So I started doing that. And then I, I think I fell in love more with talking to people and my clients rather than, um, the cutting hair aspect. Right. And I, I, I developed a very good, um, respectable business out of it great clients and i was really busy i was fortunate enough to do that for a while so i thought to myself I'm like you know what if i can really do this very well i'm pretty sure anything i could do if i really work hard and put my mind to it i can do it right so um when the pandemic hit i, I quit barbering and uh, i thought to myself you know i, I want to pursue my acting something i've always wanted to do and like talk show hosting and everything so i, I developed the podcast at first, it wasn't even called the Up and Adam Show. It was called 22 and You Podcast. The reason why it was called 22, because when I was cutting hair, I had a, a, the nickname 22 Cuts. It was like my Instagram handle and everything. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah. Because why my, 22? My, because my birthday is March 22nd. And, um, and, and, and uh, in high school, I had my, my, my regular personal page called Adam Lou 22. So it kind of rhymed with it. Got you. Got you. Yeah. I was like, you know what? I'm going to run with this 22 thing. So yeah, why I didn't not? Like right? it. I didn't like it after a while. And I'm like, you know, how can I make it more personable more? Cause no one, uh, if, if it's someone I didn't cut, they wouldn't know what the hell 22 is. They're like, hell's 22. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's not the inside joke. It doesn't work. Yeah. It doesn't apply exactly. Yeah. So I called the up and I'm sure often then I just, uh, that's where the inspiration kind of came from. I just was like, I love talking to people, love getting to know them. And, uh, again, was very, was very fortunate to cut a lot of interesting people too. So I started off doing my friends and everything and people that yeah. like other creatives and everything. And then I just kind of blossomed from there. Yeah, no, it's uh, quite a story. And, uh, you know, I see a lot of myself in you, especially when you said, uh, 
I'm happy you were honest about like you couldn't find a job like even for Tinos, like no one wanted to hire you kind of thing. Because yeah, in my I, teen I, years, I, man, I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, same here, man. In my teen years, they said some bullshit response, like, you know, you need experience, whatever. And then when you actually got the job, um, you realize like no one had experience. It's just because their daddy or their mommy helped them. Yeah. So yeah, like good for you, man. Like I'm happy you found your own path. And uh it's amazing, like uh the turn of events, like what it would bring you. Um, I see that it was a, a <laughs> the appropriate journey for you, right? You're very charismatic and outgoing. So it would only make sense, right? Why you want to talk to people and you learn a lot from people, right? I'm sure you can say the same thing. Like you're inspired by like their journeys. And again, we're going to get into like your guest list, but even starting off with just friends, like talking to you, like just learning, like that statement about couldn't find a job, you know, kind of was struggling, but then I was offered this barber job, but never thought of it it's kind of like he tells you like you're not the only one right like there's a lot of other kids out there that went through those other um kind of challenges uh because we're told right at that age you're supposed to be working at Fertino's by now you're supposed to be working at a grocery store you're supposed to be working here retail but the reality is is a lot of us start later in life right it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with us it's just Mm -hmm. not our time right yeah and I I think society puts that pressure on us too sometimes our family puts the pressure on us but they don't like my my parents like I have two older siblings who went to university, graduated with honors and everything. Nice. I, I didn't even go to college. I went for like two weeks at Humber, dropped out. It wasn't for me. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, and that was something as well that like plays into my character. Um, not to say like I was better than school. Like, like no, I, no. Never, I would never, ever say that, but it's more just like, it, honestly, it I, wasn't I, for you. It wasn't for it was, me. And yeah. um, it wasn't going to fit in what I wanted to do. And uh, yeah. I tried applying to like, um, you know, for film and everything like that at York, I didn't get in. I didn't have the grades because in high school, I screw around like a lot of, like a lot of other people, you know, messed around and didn't take it seriously. So I kind of set myself back, but I've, again, I've always wanted to be on camera on TV or something like that. So, but yeah, it, it's what society tells us, man. Like, Oh, you got to do this at this time. It's, it, and it's, it stresses us out. And that's why I think uh, a lot of people our age have anxiety uh, yeah. fear for this stuff. And it's again, social media plays a big factor in that because yeah. everyone's posting like their their six their success. And I do I quote it like that because yes. it's all a facade sometimes. People just say they're so successful when it just, you know, I could post a picture with Gucci this, Gucci that. It doesn't mean I'm successful. You know what I mean? So, it's true. Yeah. And, it and you we gotta do it now because you know everyone else is doing it. No, it's true. And and that's something that I, I myself, I know for a fact, uh, before the pandemic, during the pandemic was battling with, uh, because when you're going through a dark period in your life, uh, the worst thing you could do is go on social media, because like you said, it's such a facade, like you don't really even know what's going on. And half of these people you run into in real life, because you see their Instagram, how polished it is. Um, mm-hmm. Not to like, you know, judge them or anything, but they're not even that interesting. And they're also like going through their own stuff. Like they don't, it's not like it's not that glamorous. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like we we all. heighten it. Yeah, we we hype it up way too much, and uh, it's a huge letdown. And the thing is, is like, yeah, you should just uh, honestly focus on yourself and your own journey. I think that's the takeaway, right? Um, and I'm happy you said that, right? You were honest about that, because um, as if you've been following my podcast, which I know you have, I'm all about authenticity. And you could have, you know, bullshitted me and said like, yeah, I went to this, I went to that but you didn't go to college. Right. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's no shame. The reality is, is that didn't align with your dream, your vision. For me, I went to university in marketing. Uh, I did what I had to do, but if you ask my parents, uh, I never, like I had a marketing job like here and there, but it was like, never, I was always like pursuing film, whether it was directly or indirectly. Yeah. Um, so what I'm trying to say is like, it was more like a formality, like a formal education. Like it wasn't, it didn't even apply. Now I'm using it a little bit more. I'm kind of merging the two because I started my own production company. So now I can actually apply marketing, but for the longest time, man, you know, don't let it fool you. Just because I went to university, it's like same boat as you. It just doesn't mean like I'm in another category. I'm in the same category as you. <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? My, like, my, a, yeah, a creative. And, and, yeah. And my and my siblings, they went. They, it's funny. They're not even doing anything they went to university for. I believe it. All. Yeah, I my, believe my, it. My 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 brother went to marketing. Sorry, to York for marketing. Not yeah. Even doing that anymore. Not even doing my that. Sister, my sister went for film and television. Not even doing that anymore. So it's that. like it's kind of a. Kind of the irony is that, yeah, like, again, because if I were to stay in Humber, it would have been because of my parents, you know what I mean? But then, yeah. you know, they end, up, they end up listening to me and say, you know, we trust you, you know, we know you, this is what you want to do, so go for it, right? But if I if I didn't have that mentality to to really have the balls to say, I don't want to do this anymore, uh, I, I would have been, I would have been a Humber, I probably just got a marketing job, I would have been unhappy, I would have been thinking like, what if I did this, what if I did that? I never want to live my life thinking like, what if? Because yeah. why, why, why should I do that? I have all the, like, I'm thankful <clears throat> enough to live at home, 
where I have to pay, pay no bills. I'm young. I can, I'm able to take these risks now. You know what I mean? So when I get that's old, exactly I, well put, that's what I yeah, say all the time. Yeah. yeah. And if, if I was having another job, just, you know, working, you know, and everything like that, it's like, okay, well then in five, six years, all I've done is set myself back five, six years for going through my dream. Going yeah. My you're dream. delaying, you're delaying the inevitable because you know, in your heart, you have to scratch the itch, right? As they say, yeah, you have to and, pursue it. And, and sometimes too, it's it, not even just delaying it. Sometimes it's, it could be too late by then. Sometimes, sometimes you may just like end up being so engulfed in your job. There's not even enough time to even pursue anything anymore. Or maybe it's too far where it's like, you're too old to do like, you're never too yeah. old but like you know what i mean like it's kind of at a, you're at a point where like Buddy, you're just, yeah i know exactly i know exactly what you mean man because those are the same conversations the same arguments i would have but when i was like in my younger years like people thought i was crazy the way i would talk only until now to be honest with you um as you've seen with my work or with this podcast especially people have started to like um compliment and you know support me including my parents and my family but it was a very hard uh hard journey um leading up to this point, you know, just a lot of, uh, backlash, like not because they didn't believe in me. They were just, I, what I learned, especially from my mom is that, uh, it was fear, fear of being hurt. Mm -hmm. But what I said, but I proved to her, uh, my family is that even when I did work for like, you know, the corporate job, right. I had the marketing job, you know, I was the guy that was taking care of, you know, data analytics, whatever, you know, just a straight up corporate job. I still, I still got hurt, if not more, you know, the way I was treated, the way I was. So it's kind of like, I, I realized, you know, I rather get hurt in a place where I, at least I know at the end of the day, I'm trying my best at, at least I know that, you know, my heart's in it, not at a place I need a paycheck at. Right. Uh, and as cliche as it sounds, it's, it's really the reality, man. Like you have to come through that revelation uh, and realize it for yourself. So I'm really happy you had that moment for yourself. And with this podcast, with what you're doing, because I also believe you're an actor, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I also, and the reason why I say that is because people should know you're, see you as an actor. I didn't see you as an actor or, or knew you were an actor until I started seeing those monologues you were posting. And uh, one of them, and I meant it, reminded me a lot of Clarence from True Romance, like that character. Um, I want to know, like, how has the positive reception of this podcast or your acting impacted your brand and your career? Have you seen uh, people be more receptive to what yeah, you're trying I to do? I have been. And, 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 it, and I think it goes uh, um, hand in hand with like the stuff I've been posting. It's like mm -hmm. what you just said, because you, you didn't even know until I started posting those monologues. Right. Before that, it was always just like I kept what my, my mentality at first was like, um, you know, OK, I'm going to just do my 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 podcast talk show, whatever. And when I get my acting jobs, then I'll post it. But then um, my, my producer that I work with, uh, you know, he was telling me like, he's like, you know, Adam, like, why don't you just, why don't you start posting monologues now, scenes now? So people get used to True. the fact True. that they're not actors. I just out of the, out of the blue, like, Hey, I'm in this movie. Check it out. It's like, well, where did this come from? Right. So uh, the positive reception of that it's, it's really helped and elevated my craft too in many ways, because now I'm, I'm looking at it through a different lens, everything I'm doing now that people are giving me positive recognition for it it's almost as if it's like pushing me to do more now I, you know and and whether people are bullshitting me or not at the end of the day like i believe without sounding cocky i believe i'm a good actor i believe i, yeah. I work hard i i'm taking acting classes so i'm fairly listen i'm very new in this industry as an actor i'm i still have a lot to learn and i can I, i'm willing to take as much criticism as possible because i i, I need it I, I don't want people telling me like oh you're like it's, it's nice to hear all oh, you're good you're good but i want you know it'd be nice for some people to say like adam like, maybe try this you know like people in the industry try like this or maybe like maybe tone it down this constructive that. criticism it, exactly yeah, yeah. yeah. and something um, you can work with and feed off of and that yeah. that's what i was going to get into as well like you know criticism it goes both ways um and see you want constructive criticism with me like if someone critiques my work don't just say it's good or don't just, just say it's shit like actually tell me why you know what I mean? If you why, tell me yeah. why I can work on it, it can provide value. Um, but yeah, no, for sure, man. That's really good that you're taking the, those uh, chances and you're like uh, putting in the work to develop your craft. Um, you mentioned a really good point too. <laughs> you don't sound cocky at all because that's something that I'm happy you brought to light is the fact that uh, you believe you're a good actor. You believe that you can do it. Mm -hmm. um, I'll tell you it on a secret, like as pretentious as, they may, as this may sound, uh, the only person you got to really believe in is yourself. Like everyone else, like as talented as they are, you don't know how much work they're putting in, right? Only, you know, how much work you're putting in for yourself. 
So what yeah. I'm getting at is like, you have to have that conviction to succeed. Like you have to be crazy enough to believe like you can do it. And I used to tell people all the time for my craft, like the only reason why you see me obsessed and keep going at it and, you know, having this podcast with Adam, or whatever, is because in my heart, I believe I'll make it, you know what I mean? And it's like, you need that conviction and people might, you know, rub the wrong way. Like, okay, calm down. But it's, it's the truth. It's, it's the yeah. way it is. Right. Sorry. I was going to say, I think, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Say, I think people who say like, Oh, because I, I know what you mean. I have, I have friends too sometimes. At first, not, not, not friends. I would say like, just like. Acquaintances or like, yeah, people. Yeah. yeah. People like in your community. Bump, yeah, peers. Yeah if, I, <laughs> I, yeah, if I bump into them, I'd like, if I yeah. go out like an outing or something like that. Yeah, There's something yeah. that says to like, oh yeah, but like, what's your backup? This is the famous thing. But what, what, what's your backup plan? Oh yeah. I yeah. Tell, you know, I tell people, I go, I don't have a, I don't have a fucking backup plan. I yeah. said, because if I put that in my head, what's my backup plan? I'm already setting myself up to not make it it's it's almost like listen some people may disagree with me on that that's just the way i operate i don't believe yeah for sure. A backup plan because for sure my my thing is that i'm gonna keep going until i make it i don't care how long it takes do you know like for example like because you're a film fanatic too and everything yeah for sure look, look at like christoph waltz willem dafoe yeah. those two actors were one of my favorite two of my favorite actors yeah of course you know they got their starts like they're they blew up in the like late forties, mid yeah, late 40s. I believe it. They were, yeah. they were older. They yeah. Willem Dafoe, Christoph Waltz was a TV actor in like Germany. No one knew about him. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Willem Dafoe had his breakout in, in Spider Man. Before that, he was just doing like you know. I didn't I, even I know that. I thought he was a, a, a an established actor. Like I'm sure he had some quite significant roles, but not enough. You're saying like he was more of a mainstream yeah. light. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah exactly. And nice. I, I I think I mean the mixed up. I think maybe it was Christoph Waltz who. I know Christoph Waltz got his thing in, in Glorious Bastards. That was his. I know, I know, yeah. Christoph Waltz, I know for a fact. No, it was in Glorious Bastards. Like he was, think, picture it like Vaughn, like our area, our suburb. Yeah. Like he was well known. Everyone knew him. But outside of that, no one knew him. <laughs> like yeah. out in the world. Like he was an, an amazing actor, a diamond in the rough. And knew, no one knew about him. And it was Tarantino that put him in mainstream. Because it's, it's right, that movie pro propelled him like to start him. So. So, so what I'm trying to get at too about that is that there's never like you can't put a time limit on it. I have my I have my family sometimes tell me, okay, but then how long? Oh, so how long are you gonna keep going though? Until I go, yeah, I'm gonna keep going until I until I get old and die. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep going. I don't care. How long it's it true. Takes. It's true. My parents tell me the same thing. It's funny though, like, and this is what I mean by the, the attitude now changed. Uh, like it's different. But they used to have those same conversations with me. They still do, like as parents. But I haven't heard it as much. Uh, and I think the thing, the, the rea yeah, the reality, is, the think the reason is, is because I eventually told them, like, I would give it and I said, yeah, I'm like, I think by like, you know, 30 or yeah, I think by that time will be whatever. Right. <laughs> but I was always with a smirk on my face. Right. Because the reality is they, they knew that it's the tenacity. Like you'll always, like, I'm always going to be obsessed about it. Like even at 30, I'm still going to think, well, how can I be, be better? How can I get it, get to it at 35 or how can I get it to at 40? Yeah. I still remember a friend, you know, he took me out for a drink. He goes uh, a couple of years ago before the pandemic, he goes, so like, what's your next plan? Like, did you want to get a job? Like, you know, at a bank and like feed your dream and whatever, because at the time I, I left my current, that the job I had uh, to mm -hmm. pursue the arts. Right. And I said, no, I got to give myself this time to really think about it and feel it out. He's like, well, you should at least give yourself a timeline. Like if it doesn't work. So you're right. I'm like, yeah, let, let's see if, like by the end of my twenties. or So on the way back home, he goes, you're probably because he could because I just kept going on a rant like about like why I need to make it and this and that and uh he goes yeah you're not you're not gonna wrap it up by 30 are you I'm like no way <laughs> I can't exactly so it's so like 30? I I basically was saying giving into like you know his idea of yeah you know give yourself a timeline whatever feeding that um and half of these things like no disrupt to like my friend or anything like that but it's just a reality half of the friends that you run into that saying what's your backup plan I hope you know that's like their parents talking right yeah, that's not that know. like because in their heart they they wish they could just drop their shit and just become the next rapper or something and, and you know what's gonna happen <laughs> after that once you like and again not to shame our friends but it's like or anybody else it's not even friends man it's people it's their generation and i yeah go ahead i want to say something but go ahead yeah, yeah, yeah no, no, no. i was just gonna say that like you and i once or anybody who are following their dreams once we do make it they're gonna be upset at themselves and then they're gonna yeah. put it on you that's, that's what happened i'm like Oh yeah, but uh, fuck, fuck and then it's gonna be really, and then it's gonna be really challenging because you got to figure out who your friends are, <laughs> and you got to figure out who yeah, the real ones are. That's gonna be sad. That's gonna be a sad, a sad time. But what, what were you gonna say too? But I was no, I was just gonna say the reason why I keep stressing, uh, emphasizing the fact that it's more of a generational thing is because I believe we're living in a time where, you know, especially our twenties, it's 
the prime time, right? Our parents tell us like, you're, you're young, you know, you're vibrant. Uh, you feel like the world is at your disposal and the way people post, it's just like, it's all fun, right? Like there's no, you don't see any pain, any suffering, which is fine. You know, there's nothing wrong with having, yeah. you know, people could comment on my page and say the same thing, but we make these podcasts. I do my vlogs. I do my corner talks, whatever is because I try to sprinkle in like document my journey. Right. And what I'm trying to get at is I strongly believe because I starting to see it as I get older and people older than me always advise me is that once you start reaching like 30, man, once you start reaching your thirties, it's like, I'm not saying it's over because it's never too late to pursue dreams or whatever, but you're going to start to see man a decline. Cause a lot of people get fed up with posts and things like that. I don't think people will be as like, I don't know, like just, you know, proud to like show like what they're doing, you know what I mean? Cause it, it becomes like redundant. Like everybody's like celebrating the, th- the same things. No, no one's celebrating something unique. So, you know, to, ca- so to, to counter that, to, yeah. to, the solution to that is adapt. Once you, you know, even me, I've been through so many changes with what I'm doing. Let's say I'm doing what I'm doing at 30 and it's just the same shit over and over. I'm going to adapt and say, okay, well now what my audience now, we're in our thirties, what do they want to see? How can I like, how can I adapt to the times now? Like that's my solution to it. Because again, you're right. You lose that passion. If you keep, if you just keep doing the same shit over and over and over, you got to really, if you're passionate enough, you'll find ways and you'll be a little bit like creative to make it work and to just adapt to the times, you know? Yeah. And to, to clarify, by the way, like, this is never to comment because I'm very fortunate uh, and you're very fortunate that we have people that are supportive enough and um, we have the drive, like, you know, to pursue what we're doing and we're, we're committed at it, whatever have you. But at the end of the day, like there's people that, you know, they don't need to pursue the arts, right? Like I'm not co- talking about those people, like those people, like I know for a fact, like friends too, family, they uh, are happy with the jobs that they have. I'm talking about the people, because you know who I'm talking about, people that like, you know that they want to pursue something or, you know, like I know friends that wanted to pursue music or wanted to pursue acting as well. And they didn't because they didn't believe there was money in it. I knew a guy that wanted to be a radio host and he went to school for it and did everything. And it's like, they didn't even take it that far because they thought the internship money was too low. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, but what I'm saying is like, well then what's the excuse? Like I I can't feel bad because it's like, you didn't even give it a shot. You know what I mean? Like, so that I think that's where my beef comes in. It's like, you know, I understand like if you got bills to pay, like if family, whatever, but if you're in a predicament like that, where the opportunity presents itself, or even when I, like, I was talking about you, Adam, but like, I was talking about this since I was like a teenager, I was like a weirdo in high school, like saying, yeah, your twenties, like should be a time, like, you know, to, to build your craft and like pursue your, and everyone was like, what, what are you talking about? You should find a job, <laughs> you should make money. Like people thought I was really crazy. And especially in this area. Yeah. I was like a black sheep. Well, dude, but, it's funny. We, we, we yeah. live close to each other too. We're like, we live in the same area. We, we both went to BTU, yeah. right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. You're, you're a few years younger than me, I believe, right? Yeah, I, 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 went, I went to school with your sister. That's how I... Oh, okay, Selena, right? Yeah, yeah. That's how, I, she, that, that's, how I, that's how I heard of you too, through, through Falcone and through, through your school. Yeah, through yeah, yeah. I know, my, my sister makes me laugh. She made me laugh yesterday because I posted that behind the scenes video, the music yeah. video, right? And uh, she goes, because I was getting a lot of feedback from like your, your, your peers and things like that. And... She goes, yeah, your friends more, you have more friends, my, uh, you're more, more friends with my, my friends than I am with them kind of thing. Like yeah. I talked to them. Right. Cause she's so like into her school, whatever. Right. Yeah. Um, and it, but it, whatever, it, it's a small world, a small community. And another thing, right. As you get older, like right now, like people might think there's a gap, but there's no gap. Like when you get older, like the, the people you collaborate with are of different ages and, uh, different backgrounds. Um, you know what I mean? Absolutely. And uh, that's where, that's where the magic happens. <laughs> right. Yeah, so absolutely, man. I'm really happy you're on the same page about that. And, uh, you know, it's so important that, uh, you have that mindset and to not get discouraged when people like, will tell you like, you know, what's your backup plan is that because it is scary. Like, let's be honest as humans, we should have some sort of Avenue or God forbid, but I think it, if you set yourself up right and you have your head straight, um, you don't, like you said, you don't need a backup plan. Do you know what I'm talking about? Cause it's not a, like, it's a gamble, but it's not at the same time. Like you only would yeah. continue if you have, you also have to like, look at the indicators of progress, right? That's what I always say. Well, dude, even people have normal jobs, man. It's a gamble. I, I, I think it's a gamble no matter what. Yeah, that, that's you're what, absolutely right. Yeah. People think sometimes that like getting a uh, nine to five or this is such a security blanket thing. It's not. No. Nobody, like look at it do we suspect the fucking pe- sorry i'm not sure if no. I'm to swear. no no <laughs> but, do whatever you want man <laughs> yeah, but yeah yeah there did anybody sus- suspect the pandemic that happened you know people lost a uh, nine to five jobs jobs that they were that were supposed to be cushiony yeah. uh and look at me as someone who's like 
pursuing something that's like people think is so left field when like I'm I have all the perfect resources whether there's a pandemic whether there's this whether there's that to pursue it you know what I mean so no for sure and like, back to that, what you were saying like yeah. yeah no I'm saying like uh when I worked that corporate job like the marketing job uh after six months because I, I was a contract right I believe that you know i prove myself they'll hire me they'll keep me on because this is right out of university right so you yeah. need it's one of those like you need the, a job just to like be relevant right yeah and they let me go man after six months <laughs> and everyone That's thought happens. i was gonna and it was an entertainment business and everyone thought that i was gonna you know kill it stay in it uh even if i met you you probably would have told me the same thing because you know how much i love movies right but mm. it happens you know nothing's guaranteed the only thing that's guaranteed is uh your your hustle <laughs> your 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 commitment to, to success that's, right that's exactly what it is man and that's what yeah. i always trust to everybody my family my friends everybody yeah so i'm so happy we're on the same page about that um with regards to back to like criticism so we've discussed the positive reception if you don't feel comfortable about this if you don't feel comfortable about this you don't have to discuss it but i am curious like have you received any backlash have you received any negative people jealous people envious people it bother yeah. you like yeah so yeah, I, so can you walk me through that and the reason why i bring this up by the way is because i want this is uh therapeutic for people listening this is uh cathartic i want people to understand it and i want people to be inspired by it because yeah, adam has come a long way yeah so so let me hear it. what's going on so well um i'll start with one that happened just happened recently i posted um okay. remember i did that breakfast club reenactment thing yeah 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 you, so, you killed it with uh what was the guy's? I don't even know the actor, but uh, John, uh, uh, John Bender's the, uh, character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. John Nelson, <laughs> yeah. John Nelson's the. Uh, yeah, you became the role. I love the. I love with your acting. I should just mention this before you continue. Yeah. Is that the body language? I think the body language is, is very like people people that I know that act or want to are try acting. It's they're just reciting lines, but you actually get into the character. If that makes sense. Yeah. Well, I, 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 there's a little bit of an issue with that too, which I'll explain. But first. Okay. Yeah. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah so with 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 uh, that one. Uh, I got a lot of positive feedback on uh, my Instagram and everything from people I know, right? So I posted it on YouTube and then it didn't blow up, but it got, it got 950 views or whatever for, oh, okay. for pretty good for like just a, an actor. No, for right? sure. Yeah. Considering and you're following too, right? You always got to look at the proportion, right? Yeah. yeah. And um, I got, I deleted all the comments because I don't want to, I don't want, you know, I, I don't want that stuff to live on there Okay. because it's it just uh, discouraging for me to look on that stuff. No, for uh, sure. I had 11 comments and every person I had like, like eight thumbs downs. I had one thumb up like, and eight down because now YouTube took that off and other thumbs down. Right. I don't know if you noticed they took that off. Yeah. Yeah. There's no dislike anymore. Cause I put a dislike. I'm like, Hey, how come it's not appearing? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're right. I'm saying like on a video. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, imagine it's mine. Huh? Yeah. No. Right. <laughs> it's like, Hey, hey we're going to talk after this call. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I had 11 comments. They're all bad. Oh, you're shit. This is terrible. You have too much time on your hands. Blah, 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 blah. Now, are these people you know? No. Fuck. Okay. So that's why I thought to myself, fuck. Like the, so that must mean. So this is where, so anybody listening, this is where mm -hmm. you can, how you can uh, deal with this type of issue. Yeah, for sure. At first, I, at first I was thinking to myself, okay, well, I'm going to delete the comments. I'm going to, you know, you know, just so people don't see it. But wait, but that means if random people are saying it's shit, but people I know are saying it's good, that must mean people that are saying it's good uh, are good. They're lying because they know me. And these people who don't know me are telling the truth because they don't know who I am. So it's, it's unbiased, right? But then I thought to myself, you know what? Someone taking the time out of their day to comment something bad, that means they, they, have, they have much bigger issues than anybody else. They, have, yeah. they, they, they need the support more than anybody. Like they're they, who knows? Maybe that person commenting your shit. Maybe they tried doing that that scene, and they, and they couldn't get it right. Or maybe they're an actor. They couldn't make it in what they're doing, and they're just taking it out on me, right? Listen, at the end of the day, I, I don't know what the reason is why they commented bad. Listen, if they think I'm shit, at this point, all I can say is that that's their opinion, and everyone's entitled to an opinion. But I'm never gonna prevent it from from keep from. I'm never gonna prevent myself uh from excelling and, and keep going yeah, from moving here. forward from it yeah you're never gonna fold because of a comment because exactly. i'm glad i'm glad you said it because people might like i don't want to be, be misconstrued here but when i comment when i get agitated with regards to these comments obviously no one wants to see negativity but at the same time it can be constructive however at, and everyone's entitled to their opinion like you said hmm. like 
yeah. if they believed it wasn't good, yeah, unfortunately, they had to use profanity, whatever. But I know for a fact that, and I'll give you an, an example, is this is what I mean by always click their profile. Who's commenting? Now, I know that's like easy to be like, well, you can't be judgmental. Like, it doesn't matter who's commenting, but yeah. just look into their world. Like, who are they? Like, always look at if it's coming from a credible source, right? For example, like with my films, right? Um, there have been people like in the past, whatever, they'll say like, oh, this is cringe. This is this, this is that, which is fine. You know, they're giving an opinion. So I would like more to that, like more evidence as to why it's cringe. Because then if, if you say like Tarantino, my boy, you know, my hero. Yeah. He said that at a panel on can. Can Film Festival. He goes, if you say it's shit, that's your opinion. And also, I would expect you to make something better. But if you can't back it up, then you need to sit down because there's nothing you can do because I'm in the position to make the film. Do you know exactly. what I mean? And that's my point. That's what I was trying to say. Exactly. Like people who are saying that, it's like, if they're not even in the industry, what the fuck does their opinion matter? And even if they are, and even if they are an actor, right? And they're, 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 the way the, there's a way to provide feedback. You don't tell someone it's shit and they should know that to be professional, right? You would provide uh, more to it, like more constructive feedback. Yeah. And again, even if it is their opinion, whatever have you. But the reason why I'm getting back to like looking at the profile is when I launched my clothing line, the 94 collection, um, this was way back, like just right when the pandemic started, uh, I went through a different supplier. So I had like different logos. I was experimenting. And my sister, I call her the creative director. She really helped me uh, revamp it, like with colors and the style and like where to put the nice. logos and everything, like make it more appealing, right? To especially yeah. the female demographic. Yeah. But what I'm saying is when I first posted it, like my prototype, some guy uh, commented and says, this is, this is a nice hoodie, but it's very cheesy. I, you, you could have done better and you know it. And I was like, whoa. Like it really did like pierce my heart because that was my first probably like really negative feedback outside of my circle. Um, so what is what I mean by looking at the profile? So I said, you know, everyone's entitled to an opinion. He, he's a customer, right? We can't reject him. So I clicked the profile and the there's no aesthetic to his page. There's nothing remotely to, to indicate that he has an understanding of fashion, right? Uh, there's just sketchy photos. Everything's blurry. There's like pictures of like, you know, disheveled areas he's in. Like, I don't know. He just seemed like, someone from like a rough part of the area uh, neighborhood yeah yeah and now again i'm not if you think about it, i'm not trying to judge him but if you're commenting on a fashion or a stylistic piece that i'm posting how am i supposed to take it that personally or that to heart if it's coming from someone that doesn't even have an aesthetic themselves yeah does that make sense Absolutely. now i know that sounds crass but think about what i'm saying here it's like you have to really judge and assess who it's coming from do you know what i mean no, everyone's I, entitled I, to I, opinion, I totally but... i totally agree. i totally agree with you man Absolutely. Yeah. And so, but instead of being offended, what I did is I just, because I, honestly, I wasn't like at first I'm, I'm human. I'll admit it. Yeah. It bothered me, but I looked at the page again and I, and I said, and I looked at who it was coming from and I said, you know what? He's just throwing out an opinion. I'm not going to attack him. I'm not going to harass him. Cause I know a lot of people were telling me like, yo, tell him off, whatever. I'm like, no. So I replied back. I said, thanks for the feedback. And that's what I say to people with a happy face. And that's it because it's true. Like, thanks for your tip. Thanks for your insight um you know people have commented on my podcast like oh this is a boring conversation and i said thank you for your advice because if you think about it that's them giving you advice right they're yeah. they're giving you a tip or an insight now what you do with it is up to you but i always go back man to what tarantino says i know he's in another another realm like compared to us but it always goes back to like the root of the the artist is if you could do something better or just as equivalent or of another take or angle do it but don't go out of your way to comment on those uh, like critique and like attack. Cause what you said on your comments, there's, there's a way to like provide criticism and then there's a way to like completely just slam. And like the, the way from what it sounded like it, people, like you said, were going out of their way to hurt you. Does that make sense? Yeah. And that's what, you know, I didn't day like, it's not nice hearing those things, but at the end of the day, I really don't give a shit because you know what's going to happen, yeah. dude. One day, from both, for, this goes for both of us. Yeah. When me and you make it, and anybody watching this uh, this podcast today, when you make it to where you're gonna be, you're always gonna get people who are gonna say shit, no matter what. Look at people like, look at like uh, uh, Leo DiCaprio. Look at Robert De Niro. Look at Al Pacino. Listen, Al Pacino is one of my favorite actors, but I'm sure he gets people too that say, "Oh, he's a shit actor. I don't like Al Pacino." Is that? Yeah. Happens all the time, and like you would. So that's why it doesn't bother me anymore because. If, if I'm getting a few people here and there just saying I'm shit, and but I get a lot of people saying it's good, 
that's not that, those are not bad. That's not a bad ratio for someone who's just starting off. Like so that's what that's why I put no. in my head. I always look at things from a positive angle, no matter what. Yeah, that goes for everything. You always life. and you and you got to. And you just mentioned some heavy hitters there. And and what's funny is to this day, like people don't realize this because again, what you just said, the positivity outweighs the negativity. But there are people, even people that I respect, like film reviewers, that don't like DiCaprio. <laughs> they think he's like a pretty boy that plays dress up. I'm serious, man. Like. The shit I have to hear on the internet. But what I'm trying to get at is like, there's people out, there's always going to be someone out there that's going to not like your stuff. You know I mean? That's unavoidable. You have to enjoy what you do. You have to believe that you're, what you're doing is great. And you have to look for indicators of progress success. And what I mean by that is in your circle and outside of your circle, people that you respect in your community, if they are telling you like, you know, the guests that you bring on or people, because I've seen that, that video where you were uh, doing the departed scene, right? with uh DiCaprio oh uh, Shutter Island Shutter Island. Shutter Island yeah oh sorry Departed yeah Shutter Island that's right. <laughs> I was gonna um, do Departed though, I got to two. Was, yeah yeah was, yeah. yeah that's next yeah. <laughs> sneak peek um what I'm saying is that uh, I'm sure with that one from what I see I don't know maybe it was wrong but did you get more of a positive reception it yeah, looked like a lot of people yeah I did but I didn't get as many views as the Breakfast Club one so yeah. who knows if maybe who knows if I got the same amount of views may have been equal maybe even worse i probably would have got worse who knows but maybe there's just some salty people that are uh <laughs> you know what i mean like from the 80s that uh, thought of, saw the movie a different way <laughs> yeah but, but you know what you know what it comes down to man and this is a little bit of a a little bit of a side no thing about yeah. it the thing is and i and um so i, I i'm taking acting classes right now right and nice. um just to, to better my craft and everything like that and I, I, I'm actually posting a scene. I'll send it to you though. So you can see it first before I post yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Man. I, would you. I would love your advice and yeah. like your critique as a film lover, filmmaker, everything. Right. Um, but uh, my problem is I'm, and it, my acting teacher told me this morning, cause he just sent me his response about it. Yeah. I sent him to him privately. He was like, you, you have a very rare quality, which is good, but it can also hurt you. You're oh. very good at, you're very good at mimicking things. He goes, oh. every, every scene you do, it's, it's almost, and he it goes, it's good because it's almost as if you're reenacting it on the, on point. Like you, you, you are that person, but he goes, instead of being a Leo DiCaprio or Shutter Island, instead of being John Nelson in breakfast club, be Adam Lupus as if you were in these movies. He goes, so he goes, for example, like the one I'm, the one I'm doing, it's, it's called product, product, get prodigal son. It's, okay. I, don't, I don't know how to pronounce it. Pro, Prodigal prodigal, prodigal yeah, son. I don't know, yeah, Prodigal Son. It's yeah. with Tim, Tim, Timothy Chalamet. It's a, uh, it's a play, I think. Yeah, well, okay. he, he performed it in a play, and it was like six years ago. But the way I did it, I tried to make it my own a bit, but I still, my problem is when I, I have to stop watching the clips beforehand and studying that. I have to just look, look at the script and study like, okay, how would I do it? I have to kind of put myself in, in the lines and use, uh, you know, envision See, that's like a great piece of that's a yeah. great piece of feedback and this is again back to my argument my rant that i was going at is yeah you're acting well he's he's clearly a professional but what i'm saying is the way he knows how to construct criticism with you you don't just say you're you're good at mimicking but it's bad <clears throat> you give the guy you know maybe some leeway some kind of like note to like improve and oh, i yeah. love that like look at this don't even watch the scene just look at the script and interpret it the way you would uh, that's that's kind of like how I approach. The, yeah. Like when I direct uh, my project, my short films, that's how I tell the actors is like, obviously they have nothing to like base it off of because it's not a remake or anything like that. But yeah. what I'm saying is like, I always say we'll, we'll do multiple takes. First take, I want you to do your interpretation because the actor is just as creative, right? They have their own view of what the character, how they should act. And then what I say is I'm going to chime in and I'm going to tell you like how I want it like i'm going to tweak areas like maybe that it can yeah be it has to be a, t a team collaborative effort man otherwise what's the point? and actors yeah and actors man like you know uh as you know this or and as i experienced they're they're very insightful man like the right ones like they have instincts um you know shout out to julian falcone like i know he's not perceived as an actor but i always joked around with him like on set when we did the music video like he knew he had a lot of instincts like he knew when to like when the camera was on him like when to like act a certain way that's why when the music video turned out the way it did. And I explained to them is that you're the front line. You're basically driving the audience. Like I can only do so much with the angles, but like you have to pull them in with your like movements. You know what I mean? Like how he was like exactly. moving his hands and his body language. You have to feel it. You have to feel them, feel it. Uh, the music, as I say, or as my mom would tell me, you got to feel the yeah. music. <laughs> and he did because I, I was uh, working with people in the past and like, I would have to, you know, just 
kind of work with them again not not everyone's a natural like actor performer whatever entertainer right um and i i demand a lot out of people because i orchestrate these projects um yeah because you're very like passionate clothing quality, yeah. yeah yeah like with these clothing lines uh did you ever see that dance music video that i did uh, uh to, for my clothing line i'll send it to you it's with uh, yeah. you know Kristen. I, I think did you go to school with Kristen Rea? oh wait i think I, I, did she post about it i think i saw it on her page i think she posted about it yeah, I don't know. I don't know if she put. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She posted on her story or something like that. It was like, like that. a I know girl I saw like her sister. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, we 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 had a great time. We we killed it. Um, and uh, you know, obviously looking forward to the next one. But I'm saying with those ones, right? Like those aren't. They're dancers, right? They're great. They're very talented, but they're not like actors, right? They're not. So I was demanding a little bit more, where I was like mimicking, like you know, the move, uh, like mouthing the words Justin Bieber and things like that, right? Mm, yeah. But what I'm saying is that um, that's what I mean by like, you got to just work with everyone and you got to like mm -hmm. understand their insights as well, because there was a lot of things on that set, for example, that dance music video where they were providing a lot of insights that I didn't even see, whether, whether it was an angle or whether something came across cheesy or, you know, just, and again, this is what I mean by constructive, like, yeah, the criticism at first, ah, what, what are you talking about? It's cheesy. But then you think about it, you digest it. They tell you like a way to improve it. And then you decide right? It's ultimately you at the end of the day. If you don't want to do it, then yeah, you have to deal with the, the consequences of the results. And if you do decide to do it, you know what I mean? Even better, right? If it works out. So mm -hmm. I think that I, I got a different interpretation. And this is why, like, maybe for me, or maybe I can give you a piece of advice, like, yeah, tell me yeah. when you yeah, when you post, like, don't even put like the caption, like, I would like, like, where the movies from, like, I think it's cool, because people can have a reference point. But I'm the me the reason why I say that is because when you post it, I didn't even read the caption. I just saw your performance and I immediately thought of like Clarence from Tom, from True Romance. Like you could be that character. You know what I mean? Cause awesome. he looked like, he looked like, yeah, he looked like irate, like just the way, like the, 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 the tension in your eyes, you know what I mean? Like the, that fire, I was like, I don't know. It just reminded me, it struck me that scene where he freaks out, like he's trying to kill the pimp and uh, he like pulls the gun, whatever, but he's just not sure of himself kind of thing. Um, yeah. But I'm saying, like, that was probably a unique... Con like, did anyone get back to you about that? Like, did anyone tell you the same thing? No. No, right? So that, that was just my imagination running wild with me, where I was like, I, I saw the clip, and I said, I got to comment. Because I know how valuable comments are to be artists. Yeah, right? and that was really interesting. I said, and I, and yeah. that meant a lot when you commented, too. Because, I, again, I, I you're someone that I, I look up to your work, too, and everything. Like, thank even you, that, thank you, you. Even the music video. Like, again, I, I saw it. I loved it. Even the, the behind-the-scenes thing. The, the whole production of it, like, I could tell there's a lot that goes into it. Like, it's not... People just look at a surface level thing. They may look at the music video and go, okay, it's three minutes. Ah, they probably just fucking did this. No, it's a whole, it's a, it's, it's an actual production. That was a two, that was a two day shoot, bro. Yeah, <laughs> that yeah. was a two day but shoot. Do people, yeah. do people think that? No, people don't no. think that. People just think, oh. And you oh, appreciate yeah, that. Yeah. You think, oh, they probably just spent an hour downtown doing this. No, 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 no. Trust me. And you know what? And I'm so happy you said that because there are, let's be honest, music videos that I've seen them and you've seen them where it's just one shot in someone's room, whatever. But when I approached that music video, I told them, I said, the biggest, the primary goal for my com production company that I always set, 94 Productions, any project I attain is what is the story? Like, what are we trying to do here? Uh, if you watch that music video, I don't know if you got that impression, but there's a story to it, right? Like he's it with is. his friends, your entourage, and they're going to a party. As simplistic as that is, it goes a long way for the viewer, right? Because they can yeah. follow what's happening. They don't have to like, freak like all these abstract imagery again that's still art you could do something crazy like that like i've seen music videos that do it but for the sakes of me if i sense there's a story and when i was working with julian falcone and i was like you know what is what do you want out of this song like what what's going on he's like honestly man it's just a bunch of guys like my closest friends we're going to a party and getting drunk i'm like beauty i'm like we could do that and i said now how can we do it against the backdrop like what's the production value here right like how do we because a big thing for me, man, is like, I love Vaughn. I have a love-hate with Vaughn, <laughs> but uh, it's just <laughs> so not. Do I, a, so do I. Yeah, right? Yeah, it's not an, it, it, it's a great city, but the backdrop's just not as inspiring, right? So what it is, is that we needed to utilize downtown. And I said, how do we utilize it for basically little to no money? And that's why I thought of these shots where they're walking through the streets, you do tracking shots, they're kind of speaking at the camera. And a big reason too is I was, I'm a big fan of Entourage, right? Oh, so that was yes. a high influence. So that's why, oh, yeah, that's why. And some people, I, I was flattered. Some people, like when they watched it, said I got entourage vibes. And I said, yeah, like that was the whole point. He's like, that's why Matt's in it, right? He's the driver, and where he's wearing the hat. He told him to wear a hat. 
because I was trying to like emulate. Yeah, I was trying to emulate that that experience, right? Because it's it's one of my favorite shows, um, and uh, not for the reason that everyone thinks. You know, the girls and the money. It's the the story is really good, and and because when of you Ari watch Gold. it, and because of Ari Gold. But when you watch it, man, like I'm telling, you, and this is what I mean by like as you get older, because I just turned 27. So when I when I first watched Entourage, I was like 15, 14 years old. Yeah, and the show was already like wrapping it up, or by that point. Um, so you can imagine how old this show is, but the way I watched it when I was 15 is so different than now. In fact, I appreciate more like season one to five, per- perhaps six, like six is more like an epilogue, like a wrap up, but one to five, man, that is like the best, like gritty. Fuck, they're just like running around, like, you know, studio canceled your film. Like, I'm not taking it if it's not for 20 mil, like Ari's like freaking out, having a heart attack, yeah. like, <laughs> seven and eight i don't know what happened to you i think it just went uh, happened to it i think it just went w- too mainstream they, but they, they, they changed they changed um because I, I know doug ellen wrote it but i think there's uh they changed the, the directors or they, they yeah they, they changed, they changed they, the camera crew or something they changed something and honestly yeah. i didn't like the the idea of vince being on drugs and like like i got the whole yeah the uh, whole the whole the whole idea of uh the, the problem with the thing with entourage is I know what they were going at because that was the whole point. It was just a document, right? Like uh, follow the life of an A-list star. Right. And the reality is, is there's a lot of A-list stars that have, you know, seen success and then they drop and then they, they make a comeback. Right. So they were trying to emulate that in one show for one character. Yeah. Yeah. It didn't apply though. That's the problem because they didn't write Vince that way that he had an indication of like dropping that low. So in season seven, when he started dating a porn star and getting to drug shaving his head, it's like Vince, the charming, like smooth talking, like charismatic, happy go lucky guy. Like he's always like the voice of reason with his friends. I think that's why it rubbed people the wrong way. It didn't really strike us as someone that would go that far, like that. Low, I, I think know, that I think that was the reason too. Yeah, I, I don't know. I I liked it up until when Vince was doing that movie Smoke Jumpers, and yeah. uh, that guy I don't know his name, but he kept stealing his lines. Yeah, yeah, and then <laughs> like that's that's amazing. Yeah, and then the last episode when Scorsese calls him, and you oh, know, yes. I. I choke up because I always call that the Hollywood moment. Like that's the moment where everything you've been working towards, like kind of aligns and someone catches you a break and offers you a chance to like, you know, realize your dreams. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, man. Uh, so I want to get back to like just a podcast um, with regards to your guest list. Cause I mentioned it a lot. So you've had quite an impressive uh, list of people uh, come on that uh, show of yours, you know, Frank mm-hmm. Stallone, David Rocco, uh, even the guy who played Henry Hill, like the younger version in Goodfellas, yeah, yeah. one of my favorite films, like amazing. Like I was just like, what? First of all, how do you get these guests? <laughs> well, so it's funny, man. I, um, when I first started again, like I said, I was in just like friends or people I knew and stuff like that. And then I remember, um, I, I reached out to, you know, that, uh, that mafia page, that mafia movie page, mafia chronicles. Do you, do you yeah. I think I might've, I might've seen them. Not, yeah. I'm not too familiar with them, but yeah. 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 So they, I've, I've, I love mob movies. I love Sopranos. Like that's my favorite show of all time. I love like gotcha. Goodfellas, Godfather movies. So I'm like, you know, I would love to get the guy who runs this page. Cause he has like one of the biggest pages for mafia movies. And on top of that, you know, it'd be cool to talk about that with him. So I, I just reached out to him on DM. Something that again, people wouldn't even do because they thought they would think, Oh yeah, he has a bunch of followers. I'm not even bother DMing. Like, and it's like, I told him, I said, dude, like I was, I was the same way. You think I, you think I, I like putting myself out there, but as corny as this is going to sound, this is a quote that, or not even a, not even a quote, really, just something that a statement, they say like, when it's scary to jump, that's exactly the time when you jump, you know? Yeah, it's true. So go all in. So I reached out to him, uh, had him on my show. It was great. And uh, it was funny from there that I thought to myself, I would love to do like a mob podcast. So we actually did one for a while. Nice. Um, And we were doing it for a while, me and him, but now he produces my show. He like edits everything. He, he's been helping me get my guests and stuff like that. He introduced me to that Italian page, Hardcore Italians, who now like, okay. we're all like, all three of us are like partnered together. So a lot, guests, a lot of those Italian guests, a lot of those Italian guests, Mike, the owner, and Justin from Mafia Carnivals, they help get these guests on for both of us, right? Mm-hmm. On top of that, when I started my acting stuff, I reached out to, to try to get a manager to help get me an agent and all this stuff. Nice. And uh, she was also in Goodfellas as well. She was in Goodfellas Casino. She plays the Joel Pesci's wife in Casino. Um, oh, okay, she, I can't remember. Yeah, she she played. Well, yeah. She she's more. She's a manager, but she's done acting in the past. 
Okay. Um, but she manages she manages Joe Pesci too. So even something like that, I hate even saying that to people because it's like I get like shy, like telling people that oh my manager represents him and stuff like that. Because half the time people don't even believe me. Yeah. But but this is this is a man. This is your current manager. She yeah, represents yeah. also Joe Pesci. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Get it. Get yeah, in a so meeting with Joe Pesci. <laughs> I would. I would love to. She was probably. She, she was probably so pissed because Joe Pesci took like a twenty-year hiatus. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> Do you remember that? We, we yeah. talk about all he the time. He came back for the Irishman, and, and they were, yeah. and even he wasn't even supposed to uh, play the role. They they cornered him, De Niro and Scorsese, like showed up at his house, Goodfellow yeah. style, and said, "You got to fix your ways." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Intervention. <laughs> well, I'm you glad. Wake I'm, up. glad I'm glad. I'm glad he did it because that was a great movie. I think he deserved him and Al Pacino deserved the Oscar no matter what. They deserved it. But, yeah, they um, kill it. Yeah. Yeah, but the I, so I work with her, so she helps me get guests as well. Uh, she's got me a lot, and we actually have a, some great guests coming up too, which I'll share at the end too. So anybody watching gets a little yeah, tidbit for sure. Getting, but um, yeah, we're getting some great people on. So that's how I've been getting them. I, I just been again like networking, like networking, put myself out constantly there. DM them. Yeah, you got it, you got it. And, and, and even though I don't have, and this goes to anybody watching too, even even if you don't have a big following, listen, I only have like sixteen hundred followers on Instagram. That's yeah. nothing. Right. Yeah. And people may think, oh, how did you get these people? Because you, it doesn't matter how many fall. Sometimes people care about that stuff. And I think it's all about just, it's, you have to just sell yourself. Yeah. It's all how you see how, it. Yeah. How you sell yourself. Like, again, like I could have, I could have had 100,000 followers and reached out, and, but been a different person, reached out to all these people that I work with now. And they may be like, ah, I don't want to work with you though. You don't like, you're not a good fit. Like, it doesn't matter yeah. at the end of the day how many fall. It matters who you are as a person. So, that's how I've been getting a lot of these guests. And it's been, it's been really good, man. And, and the, the episodes have been great. It's been really authentic, genuine, funny. And um, I just try to bring nostalgia into people's lives again. I'm like, I'm, I'm an old soul, much like you, I can tell. Yeah, because it, yeah. We have that both same characteristics. And that's what I try to do. I try to get like-minded people on my show. When I watch, yeah, when I watch your episodes, like you just said, nostalgia, like, especially when I saw the actor who played young Henry, the young Henry Hill um, from Goodfellas, it was like, what the hell and i remember freaking out i searched him up i said because i don't think i don't believe he did much after that right no he didn't like acting yeah yeah unfortunately right but what i'm saying is like again one of my favorite films and i think has a soft spot because i'm italian um i was just immediately pulled in i was like that's and even david rocco like <laughs> growing up like my nonna's house like grandmothers you know watching like that on tln TLN, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. you know what I mean like I just like what the hell like I remember I think it was recently posted I was like is that David Brock <laughs> what the hell like how did you get that and that's amazing so it's just straight up DM that's it DM emails uh a lot of the time it's been emails lately I, I, I don't usually DM people anymore do they want compensation or is it just straight up like they'll help you out so, some people do to be honest with you yeah I forgot okay. exactly because I I recorded those a while ago like those were like right. I just now i am now what I do is I record a bunch and then I work with my team to like get like promos made this, that, 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 that way everything's recorded and we just nice. focus on the marketing for everybody, how we're going to do it and stuff like that. Nice. Uh, we're, we're going with a different approach now to everything. Um, something I want to share with you too, because it could be, yeah, for good, sure. but it's, uh, it, it, I want to kind of make more documentary esque style videos for people. Right. And I think it's better in my case too, because at the end of the day, sometimes people, they may see like a, an actor they like, or someone I like, for example, like, you know, David Rock, a lot of people in, in Toronto, GT know David Rock, right. But it's nice to just post a podcast about it or just an interview, but it'd be nice to make it like where it was like a documentary feature, like 50, like 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes, a short where it's like, it, it's some parts of the interview, some real clips of what he's done, how, it, and it tells a story. I want to tell a story. Right? And, and sometimes it's hard with a podcast because which I'm sure you're aware of it too. Like things take a turn, right? Like they take multiple routes. Like you talk about one thing, and you want to try to tell a story with your conversation, but it just takes different routes because it's a genuine conversation, right? So what I want to do is like have that and then splice it where take different parts and then you, we mash it together where it's like starts from one end, tells the story into build up. So that's yeah, what cut I'm to trying to B-roll, like B-roll shots of him doing yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Got you. No, for sure. Yeah. Like I've always, well, that's why I posted the behind the scenes video yesterday is I'm trying to experiment myself with like, I love that idea of like videographer, like run and gun. It's very organic. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, obviously, that would be hard with a podcast. But uh, like even just watching like Logan Paul's podcast, there's a way he shoots it, which is makes it more interesting for some. I don't know what height, heightens it. Uh, instead of doing cuts, 
there's just a camera on a swivel, like, you know, just panning back and forth. Oh, what it turns. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's pretty cool too. And, but it suits his character, right? Like, that's who he is. He's very impulsive. He's very, you know, sporadic. Yeah. He's all there you over go. The no, no pun intended. <laughs> no pun intended. There you go, right? I wonder how he came up with the name. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, that's definitely really cool, man. And that's definitely something, uh, yeah, for sure. Like, I envision, like, to help and in any which way right uh well which we'll discuss more that's why i love these podcasts is you humanize people right exactly you don't, yeah you don't instead just, of like uh, yeah instead of being like a, instead of being like these i'm not gonna name names but like these other talk show hosts on yeah. tv i'm sure you know who i'm talking we know about. we know who I'm, yeah yeah uh i know exactly who you're talking about and uh <laughs> you know it's just the, the thing with you so, so with joe rogan like i'll be honest when i first when i initially was listening to him mm-hmm. i never really enjoyed it because i was like i don't care about like you know what they're doing on the side like I just want to know like more about how they made it how they this because I was used to a very structured interview yeah. process uh but even so even more so like even Howard Stern like he he'll talk about real life and then he'll connect it back to like how it affected their childhood and what like I like that kind of interview yeah, but yeah what I'm saying yeah. with Joe Rogan Joe Rogan what I realized is that he basically doesn't give a shit who you are. He just starts talking about like nonsense, like, you know, deer hunting and like, you know, uh, you know, cigars and like, have you tried this? And what I realized is that that's what makes the person feel comfortable enough to open up even more. And then you humanize them and you realize, wow, they're actually a, like a real person. Like at one point, like they just say, wow, I suffered with like major anxiety at one point in my life. I'm like, where did that come from? I didn't even suspect that. Right. Yeah. Um, but it comes about because they're just talking like two friends at a bar and that's how he treats it. Right. That's why they have whiskey and whatever. So it's all a different style. Yeah. yeah. Because Howard Stern is like, to be honest, like my inspiration, like uh, him and Joe Rogan were pretty cool. Uh, but I, th- I think Howard Stern takes it for me because I just love how he obviously I'm not as raunchy as him uh, because I, I like to get really serious, and like talk about like things that are interesting to me that I should mention. But I really love what he does. Like he has a different angle. He like he, he comes across like an uncle. You know what I mean? Like you're t- an, un- an uncle at Christmas. Like, did you win an Oscar for that? And it was like, no, I wasn't even nominated. What are you talking about? He's like, no, I read somewhere that you read, you won an Oscar. He's like, are you sure it wasn't for that movie? So like, <laughs> I just love these like random questions. Like, yeah, yeah. Anyway, that's a side note, but uh, no, he's yeah, good. I, 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 used, I used to watch Howard Stern a lot too on YouTube. There's a, uh, I know he, he, cha- he changed his. Uh, he's in he LA now, I think. I moved from New York. Yeah. But he, yeah. he, the thing with him, you have to understand, like he's, he's been around what, 30, 40 years. Like, yeah. for us to say that it's kind of like like even a lot of people our age don't even know what we're talking about um like they know probably of him but it's not like the level of joe rogan joe rogan's more for our generation yeah. but um yeah. nevertheless like the style like there are two different styles and i kind of go back and forth depending on like the guests but um that's how an interview should yeah. be conducted right just raw just like authentic and humanize the, the individual so it's really cool that you had uh, the those people on your podcast Thank you, you know, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's been a fun journey, man. Yeah, and and, and uh, credit to you for being like tenacious enough, you know, uh, determined enough to get them. Because you're right. You you my favorite Gretz, my favorite quote from Gretzky is, "You miss 100 percent of the shots you don't take." Right. Yeah, so there you go. That's how you got to look at it, buddy. So as of as the year 2021 uh, winds down, a lot of us uh, self reflect, you know, look back on uh, the past uh, year and uh, see how far we've come or what we can improve on. I want to know, like, going forward, like, in 2022, what is your intentions as an actor and for this podcast? What do you What do you hope to see, buddy? Well, I, I hope in 2022 I get my my shot in a major motion film, whether it's a small role, whether it's a big role, like, whether anything. I want to just get – because I'll be honest with you and anybody watching, I haven't been in a professional um, movie or show yet. Yeah. So uh, – Like audition? Yeah. I have audition. I've, 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 I've I've done audition for like for bit for big stuff too, but I haven't. Nice. I didn't get it, but yeah. um, but still, you know, I I again trial and error, and uh, it's it's hard to get these auditions, even even just to get the, the chance to audition, because you have to people people might not know this, but if you're getting into acting, what what happens is you have to be first your agent pitches you to the casting directors, and then it's yeah. up to the casting directors if they want to even give you a shot to audition. If they do, then you got audition, and then if they like you, they may want another audition. And then yeah. they'll take you. Like it's a it's a big process. And the craziest is that the director doesn't even know you exist until like no, you show no. up on set. They don't even so know. Yeah. What I'm what I'm saying is that, and then you're really then you're really lucky, right? You have horseshoes <laughs> if yeah. uh, the director shouts you out because that's when you know you can uh, like uh, 
blow past all the barriers um, yeah. and just There's get right to the, what you want. Yeah. yeah. Right. So because like, I'm always like, imagining, yeah. Like I'm always imagining like when a director like sees a look for you or like has a, like you, you say the words a certain way, right. The dialogue. Anyway, I want to say thank you again, Adam, for coming on the podcast. Uh, it's been a really uh, great time speaking with you, you know, getting an insight on your journey, you know, just how far you've come and your progress. Um, really excited for you to like what's to come 2022 and, you know, our uh, future collaboration. So um, thank you so much for joining. Uh, you have anything to say before you leave? Uh, no, just uh, if anybody's watching, just I hope you uh, enjoyed this episode. Daniel's a great guy and uh, I hope you guys got inspired and, you know, and anything you're doing, just keep going at it. Exactly. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you again, Adam Lupus. Check out the Up and Adam show and we'll talk soon. Take care.